Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Vineyard Church of God. Citra, you can say good morning back. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Right on. <laughs> Glad everyone is here in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, if you're going to check us out on the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs, a thumbs up. Uh, listen to it all. Leave us a comment. If you have any prayer requests, put them on there. We'll pray for it. Uh, because that's what we do. We're a praying church. And also, you know, if you don't want to leave it down there, if you want an unspoken request or something, just go to our website at www.thevineyard.com and go to our contact us page and write it in there and send it to us via email. And uh, we'll get it through the Vineyard email and we can pray for it and give it to our, our prayer staff and we can, you know, Pray for it corporately on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Um, other than that, just give us testimonies. Keep us up to date on the progress. We like bragging on God. Amen. Today we're going to be talking about an invitation. An invitation. I wish that I would have had time to bring out a little card and give each of you a little invitation card. You know, because that, that would have helped it out a lot. <laughs> but uh, it, it's actually, it's an invitation. And we're going to start out with the prophet Isaiah back in his uh, chapter 55, verses 1 and 2. Now, this invitation is to receive the glory of the Lord's restoration. Now, you got to understand between the Old Testament and New Testament, when they speak in the Old Testament, he speaks through the prophets. Because, you know, God, you know, he doesn't have that vocal, you know, unless he wanted to, he could, he could be vocal. Uh, I've seen it done, I've heard it done rather, uh, to other pastors and stuff where they actually got slapped in the back of the head and said, listen to me now, you know. But he used prophets back then to speak his word to the people to get it out. When Jesus came along, okay, that's God with us. So it's direct, okay. So we have an indirect in the Old Testament and direct in the New Testament. So I, I like it when they coordinate back and forth so you can get an idea of the way that God works. All right? So this is an invitation to receiving a blessing in Isaiah 55, 1 and 2. <clears throat> it's an invitation to be richly fed. Okay? Not physically fed, mind you, but spiritually fed. Now, back then, using the prophet, you don't have cell phones, you don't have megaphones, you know, you can't IM anybody or text them or anything like that and tell them, meet me at the square, okay? So, they use this little word in here, and this little word is used specifically for an important announcement, an important message to get the attention of the people. And so here's Isaiah going into this, you know, wherever he's at, the town square, wherever it is, <clears throat> and you have all these people around. And the first word he said is, Ho! H-O. Ho! Okay, now I know that non-believers will probably look at the Bible and go, Ho! Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. No, it's, Ho! Get my attention, everybody. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you will have, or I said, and you have, or excuse me, I got to back up on this, getting tongue tied here. It says, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Now, is that a catcher or what? Hey, if you don't have any money, come here. We'll feed you. We'll give you wine and milk, you know, everything. Come on, even though you can't afford it, come on. Because we'll give it to you. It says you got to buy it, okay? So, having the words go in there, the prophet is trying to get it across in God's message. Come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Okay, there's a lot said in these two verses of the Bible. And there's a lot of meaning to it. Like I said, the, just the word ho, okay? Getting the word out. 
The prophet calls out loud and clear to all that can hear. It's an important announcement and therefore preface with this unique call. Important. Charles Spurgeon wrote this. He says, Ho! This is the gospel note. A short, significant appeal urging you to be wise enough to attend to your own interest. Oh, the condescension of God that he should as it were, become a beggar to his own creature and stoop from the magnificence of his glory to cry, Ho! to foolish and ungrateful men. Because this message is for everyone, right? Because that's what it says. Everyone! So I've got to come down out of heaven and speak through my prophet. Listen! Okay? But it says, everyone who thirsts, okay? Everyone, yes, who thirsts, come to the waters. It's an invitation to everyone, but everyone who thirsts. Only those who thirst will come to the waters. If you're not thirsty, you're not going to want to drink. So you don't want to drink, right? So they're satisfied. But if you're thirsty... Come on. What kind of thirst is he talking about, though? If we aren't thirsty for what the Lord can give us, then we will never come to his water. We have to be thirsty for what the Lord has to offer. Because what he has to offer isn't going to be this little bit of, okay, I'm satisfied for now, but then I'm not. Okay? What the Lord has to offer is satisfaction. Okay, Jesus may have had this passage from Isaiah in mind when he cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. It's found in John. And we'll get to that a little bit later. But when he said, and you know, it's, it's confusing, I know, and it's weird when Isaiah turns around and says, You who have no money, come by and eat. Okay? It gives you the mindset like we have to work for what we get that's free. Okay? How do you do that? How do you work for something that's free, freely given? Okay? Those who do thirst and answer the Lord's invitation don't need to bring money. If we are thirsty for God, if we want Jesus, Jesus is free. Okay? Be thirsty. Come to Jesus. It's his invitation to us. All right? Those who do thirst and answer the Lord's invitation don't need to bring money. Their money won't really do them any good. How good is money in heaven? God doesn't use money. Then why do we give to the church? Okay. Well, that's to keep the doors open so that we can preach God's word in God's house. Okay? It's an earthly thing, yes. It's in the natural man. We need to have stuff to keep it going. Okay? But God doesn't require money. If we wanted to, we could be out on the street preaching God's word. Just go out to the street. Ho! You know, and preach God's word to everybody. Okay? But we've been blessed with the property and, and the church building, you know, the worship center and that. So is to keep it going to increase God's kingdom, to give us the finances of being you know, able to send missions out, to send evangelists out, to reach people that we normally can't reach. Okay, that's our job, to feed the needy, okay, to clothe them. Uh, you know, there are plenty of food banks around going through churches, uh, thrift stores, you know, things like that, you know, that we just give out stuff. Okay, it's what we do, but we have to get the stuff in and have the facilities to store it. So, yes, we do need finances in the church. <clears throat> and it's always been that way. Now, let's see, uh, blah, 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 I lost my place. <laughs> it says, uh, water, wine, milk. It's all free. Water, wine, and milk is all free is what he says. It isn't that the entrance into the Christian life is free, okay? There is a price that has to be paid when we follow Christ. 
We have to give up something. What is that something that we give up? It says, and then we must be char charged to advance in the Christian life. It's all free. Our growth is just, you know, see, just as much a gift of grace as our salvation. Okay? Just as much a gift. But we have to give up the world. We have to give up all these other things, uh, you know, the evil temptations, the pleasures, you know, and stuff like that, that that come with bad, okay? Give up the bad. Hey, that's not that terrible of a thing. If you give up what's bad, what is left? All that's good. So we get all that's good, right? So that's not a bad price to pay for something that is free. Grace, freely given. Charles Spurgeon also wrote, You are not permitted to drink freely of water and then to purchase wine. You are not invited to come and eat freely that which is good and then to spend your labor, or yeah, spend your labor for that which is bad. No, the rich, richest dainties of God's house are as free as the bread he gives to hungry souls. It's free. We don't have to pay for it. We don't have to have the fat of the world. That's only going to satisfy for a little bit. We get all the good stuff. Okay, that's like, you know, going from oatmeal of the world to the prime rib of God. Okay? I'll be satisfied with a good prime rib. Okay, filet mignon wrapped in bacon. Okay? <laughs> that sounds good to me. <laughs> all right why do you spend money for what is not bread when he said that in your wages for what does not satisfy in this world we buy many things okay the only thing that that i could see when when i read that verse is the way that people act okay i'm not gonna attack anybody like david okay i've got the car of my dreams this is great, fantastic. But I'm only satisfied for a little while because now I've got these other enhancements that I can buy for it. I can spruce it up with this. I can make it more fuel economical here. I can you know, do this or do that, put the little dooley dads on it. Okay, never satisfied, always gotta have more. It's like a computer. I got the best computer, fastest processor, lots of RAM. Lots of space. Okay, I can get all this stuff, but guess what? It depreciated when first time you took it outside the door, something new came in, which is even faster with more processing speed. Okay, so I'm satisfied with it for a little bit, but I liked this one because it's better. Okay, you're never satisfied, but what God has to offer can satisfy you. It's good. It's all good. Okay? In his invitation, God asks his people to ask themselves, why do I spend money for what can't satisfy? This is a remarkably relevant question in light of all the things we can pour our time and money and effort into. Things which will never satisfy the way the Lord can satisfy. All this stuff. You know, God opened my eyes a long time ago to all the stuff that I had accumulated. Rented a house, had a nice shed outside, brand new. Thought, wow, this is great. We can store our stuff in there. We were there for a year at this house and, you know, and had to move. But when we went inside the shed, the water had gotten inside of there, molded everything. So that whole shed had to go. Did I miss it? No because I hadn't seen it for a year. So why miss it? And it opened my eyes saying, why all this stuff? It never satisfied because we put it away, right? But the Lord can satisfy. He satisfies all the time. His book has been around for how long? A long time. Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, the Word of God, ever since the very beginning when they learned to write Okay? <laughs> this Bible's been around for a long, long time and it has never changed. Right? It stays the same. God's word is always true. It was true back then, it's true today. 
There are a lot of pastors that want to go ahead and change some things to compromise for the people that come in because we need people in the seats. We need to have people at church. Okay? Well, guess what? Maybe this virus was a good thing in a way because it set our minds into a different perspective. Nobody in the seats but still preaching God's word. Still getting his message out to more people than we had in the church. It's great to have the people in the seats, but it's also great to spread God's word and have it listened to. They respond to it. And that's fantastic. That's what we're here for. Right? It's not just to have the butts in the seats. I'd love to have everybody packed in here. I would love to go to two services, three services. You know, just have people, people, people hungry for God's word, thirsty for Jesus to accept the invitation. I would love that. I'd love to have a kid's church that busts out the walls, you know, and we can literally do that. We can bust down the walls and expand kid's church over into the next section. I would love that. Woo. <laughs> That's what I would like. Hungry. Hungry people. Thirsty people. Where he says, listen diligently to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Okay, the invitation's clear. The offer is made, the provision is made, and everything is available, but we must still do some things. We have to sort of, you know, we have to work for a little bit, okay? We hate that, that word, work, because it may cost us some time. It may cost us some effort. We may have to put God's word into action at times. But guess what? We need to delight ourselves, delight ourselves in abundance, okay? Everything we do, do joyfully, do cheerfully, because we know what it's for. It's for expansion of the kingdom of God, to increase his kingdom. He's the one that made us. He's the one that sacrificed his son on the cross for us. He gave up a lot for us that he made, okay? So we must do it joyfully. First, we must listen diligently. The satisfaction God promises doesn't come to those who don't listen and listen diligently. It takes time, attention, and effort to listen diligently, and some aren't willing to do this. To listen. you got to listen for God. Listen for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Listen for it. Because if we don't, we're missing. You know, hey, it was there. Now it's gone. Now somebody else has been blessed with it because we missed the call. Right? We have to listen for it. I've gone through some of that too. Holy Spirit speaks to us and we say, no, I'm pretty complacent where I'm at. I like my four walls. You know, it's my comfort zone. And we're doing really good you're blessing us really good, so why should I obey you and move off somewhere else that is, you know, uncharted territory? Okay, don't don't ever do that. <laughs> we learn the hard way. Amen. When God speaks, listen. Second, we must eat what is good. This requires some discernment. We must choose what is good and then eat that. Many just simply eat whatever spiritual meal is set before them without taking care to see that it is good. You know, the devil knows scripture too. And he could use it in a bad way. He can twist it around to meet his need. Okay? So we have to be careful when we read God's word, when we listen to God's word. Don't just take a verse out of the Bible and say, that's good. Someone up in our highest office has already done that. They've taken it out of context and used it. No. 
you got to read the before and the after and know the situation that the God's word, you know, that part of God's word was placed. This is what he meant when he was saying it. Okay? We can't just spew out words and take it as, this is the Bible. It's God's word. Yeah. But understand it. It's called wisdom. You got to understand the knowledge that you're getting. Understand what is being spoken to. That's why we always say meditate on God's word. We used to have a, uh, a group. You know, we'd split up in groups of the church. We'd have church on Sunday. Sunday night, we'd all split up, take what God or what pastor had preached about, and we would meditate, round table the whole thing through what he did and get the meaning out of it. Right? That's meditating on God's word. Using it wise, right? Now we're going to go out of Isaiah. We're going to go out of where God had to speak through his prophets, and we're going to go directly to the source, which is in John 7, verses 37 through 39, and where Jesus is talking, okay? Now this is going through the, uh, the, the feast, and it usually lasts for eight days, Okay? So on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Okay? What you bring in is what is going to pour out. If we bring in Jesus... Jesus is going to come out. Okay? Now, I like how he was talking about this, but guess what he's really talking about in this? It's the great invitation, yes. But he's talking about the Holy Spirit, which is going to come because we continue. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom the believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. All right? The Holy Spirit, the promised one. Okay? What did God say when Jesus was glorified? The Holy Spirit came down. He said, I will pour out my spirit on all. Pour it out. Okay? Just like water. You thirsty? Here it is. I'm giving you the Holy Spirit. You came to Jesus. You have him in your heart. You have him in your life. You're speaking Jesus. Now here's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is speaking through you, working through you, showing people God's purpose, okay? God's plan for you. He helps us out, okay? And this is where the women are working on the spiritual gifts. What gifts do you have that the Holy Spirit is working on you inside to pour out to other people? who are thirsty, who are hungry. This is the invitation, okay? He spoke it concerning the Spirit whom those believing in Him would receive. Believers of Jesus, believing in Him and His gospel, believing every word that He spoke as truth, as love, as peace, because every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father, right? Yes. He gave us Jesus, perfect. Who gave us the Holy Spirit, perfect. All right, there's nothing bad in here. The invitation is to eat and drink free. We are no longer thirsty. We're no longer hungry because it's all here. And we feed on it every time. Anytime we want to, we crack open the Bible, we look at God's Word, and we feed on it, meditate on it. Amen? Mm -hmm. So are you going to accept the invitation? Have you accepted the invitation? Everyone out there watching the video, accept the invitation. Because it's free. And you'll be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you for your Word today. We ask for your blessings to be upon each and every one of us, Father God. Everyone watching, everyone listening, all that are here. 
We ask for your good gifts, your blessings to just pour down upon us. That we may not be thirsty anymore, not be hungry anymore, and be completely satisfied. We ask that you watch over us as we have in the missions field today. That Holy Spirit, you are with us, that you are guiding us. And Father God, that you are protecting us every step of the way. That you watch over us, our vehicles, our houses, our properties, our friends, our family. We pray for your protection to be upon this land. That no evil can harm us, Father God. We ask for increases in our lives, financially, physically, mentally, spiritually, increase in our lives. Let us move closer to you, Father God. This is the year of us moving closer to you. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. And we'll see you next Sunday.